This Cornwall Channel broadcast has been in part funded by FAC Properties, a trusted company for buying, selling and letting property in Cornwall. Well, welcome to this week's Cornwall Channel. This week I'm introducing the show from here at Bodmin and Wentford Railway. Always delighted to come up here and see the wonderful people here and look out for a feature with them coming soon here on Sky 212 and FreeSat 401. Now, coming up in this week's program, we have a special documentary by Grace Pascoe, The True Price of Fish, documenting the importance of using life jackets with our West Country fishermen. Our music video comes from The Change Room this week with their song, A River Runs Between. Enjoy the show. Please get in contact with us on our Facebook, Twitter pages and of course online at cornwallchannel.co.uk. Enjoy the show. Big one in there. The southwest of England has one of the oldest fishing traditions in the UK. A huge variety of seafood is landed here from haddock to squid, lobster to mackerel. This seafood travels near and far to reach our plates and can be purchased fresh and frozen across the country and beyond. Seafood is eaten by thousands of us around Great Britain each day and makes for a healthy, tasty addition to our diets. When eating seafood, it's all too easy to forget the true price our fishermen pay to put fish on our plates. Cozy coves, bustling ports and delicious fresh fish are some features famed here in the southwest. Fishing is a way of life for many here. However, it comes with inherent danger and risk as the UK's most dangerous profession. One in 200 fishermen will be killed or seriously injured every year. Life jackets can and do save fishermen's lives. Despite this, just 25% choose to wear them. I think the sticking point with lots of life jackets is the fishermen, not the life jackets. Although they come over very rough and tough and everything else, they're a big bunch of sissies really, and they just don't like to be seen wearing a life jacket. And I think that's the biggest problem. There's an entrenched view amongst certain members of the fishing uh, community that life jackets are dangerous. They hook on gear and uh, potentially you can get dragged over the side. There's also a view uh, amongst certain fishermen that um, it's kind of almost a macho element. There's a cultural thing going on that you don't wear a life jacket because it's kind of uncool and you're soft if you wear a life jacket. And um, there's also the inconvenience. Fishing is very, very hard work indeed. You're multitasking, there's an awful lot going on. And to remember to put your life jacket on every time sometimes is, you can see it's almost too much, there's too much going on. And it's easier to just leave it hanging on a, on a hook. I don't wear a life jacket. I'm not <laughs> by any means the best swimmer in the world. Um, I don't find any of them comfortable. What I've found, I've tried quite a few, um, and I, I, because the nature of crabbing where you swing in pots in over the side, I tend to find that the 
shoulder pots of the life jacket uh, dig in and give me neck and shoulder pain. It's a male dominated industry and there is a lot of bravado and a lot of I'll be alright. But sadly these statistics don't reflect that actually a lot of fishermen do die unnecessarily. In the past life jackets have been big, cumbersome. They themselves have posed a, a bit of a, an issue on board a boat. Um, I mean, they, they were bulky, difficult to move in, uncomfortable, but I think most of all they, they could very get tangled up in the gear, uh, in the winch, whatever, and I think they, they themselves posed an, an issue. So there, there was a real reticence or a reluctance to wear them because of that. I don't intend sinking. That's my theory anyway. That's what he said in the Titanic talks. In the past 10 years, there were almost 600 serious accidents on UK fishing boats. 196 vessels were lost at sea and 87 fishermen lost their lives. Fishing communities in the southwest know the risks all too well. I know a few people that have died in fishing accidents, yeah. Yeah, yeah, several. Fishing is, is, is well known as the most dangerous profession in the world. Um, a lot of it is because of the unknown um, elements. Nobody knows what the sea conditions are going to be like. Um, there's a lot of heavy equipment involved in hauling the nets. And in fact, my own husband, um, when he lost his life, it was on a flat, calm day, perfect day at sea, but a toggle from his oilskin top came loose and got caught in the heavy equipment and he was pulled in um, to the net drum. We're gonna be late. Oh, I forgot to lock the back door. We need to talk. You drink too much, you smoke too much, you let us down too often. Mum, Dad, we've decided it's time to go to Dale's. If your car drinks too much, smokes too much, or lets you down too often, it's time you went to Dale's. Looking for a home maintenance company you can trust? Ocean now provides a whole range of expert maintenance services, from heating, electrics and plumbing, to refurbishment and roofing. And thanks to our 24-hour emergency call-out service, you're always covered. Ocean, we do more than you think. To find out more, call St. Austell 874488 today, or visit www.morethanyouthink.co.uk. FAC Property Consultants and Lettings Agents. We are a Cornish family-run property business with a thriving lettings and estate agency. We have a variety of incentives if you're a first-time landlord or an experienced landlord with multiple properties. If you're looking to sell your property, we have a limited offer to sell your property for 1% plus VAT. Give our experienced specialist team a call on St. Hostel 812271 or Bobmin 264 686. Hewis Water Garage, conveniently located in St. Allstall, Cornwall. We are a used car dealer offering knowledge and experience on a wide range of vehicles. All our sales vehicles come with the following. Full MOT, full service, HPI check, in-house comprehensive warranty and courtesy vehicle. Visit us online at hewiswatergarage.com or call St. Allstall 882 114. 
Julian Foy is a family furnishing business started in the town of Foy in 1862 and have four large furniture showrooms at Truro, St Austell, Weybridge and Hale. The range includes lounge suites, beds, carpets and curtains. The commitment to quality extends all the way from measuring and supplying to careful fitting by qualified carpet fitters directly employed by Julian Foy. Visit us today in store or visit www.julianfoy.co.uk. At Newquay Cornwall Airport it takes less than 100 steps from the departure lounge to the plane. So why not let us help you get away on your travels, be it for business or pleasure, with less hassle and more convenience. Year-round flights to Manchester and London Gatwick operate with Flybe and these services currently operate daily, offering the opportunity for passengers to make onwards connections to destinations across the UK, Europe and worldwide, using their network if required. Direct flights also operate between Newquay and the Isles of Scilly and operate daily with Skybus, except on Sundays. During the summer months, the airport operates services to Belfast City, Edinburgh, Newcastle, Liverpool, Southend and new for summer 2014, Birmingham International. I'm Barry Mundy. Uh, I've fished here out of Mullion all my life and fishing for over 50 years now. Um, actually, fifth generation's been fishing from, from the cove. It is very dangerous for the unexperienced, you know, and um, uh, a lot of it, a lot of uh, tragedies that have happened are, are because of inexperience. Yeah, definitely. When I started fishing, very few, if any, fishermen wore a life jacket. Basically, they were too big and cumbersome. It, was, it wasn't easy to actually work in, in the life jacket. It's only been the last few years that they've actually uh, got smaller. I was wearing one the last few years, four or five years probably. But uh, I've picked up one now from the uh, Siemens Mission at Newlin, and uh, it is much better for, for working in. It's something, you know, that you consciously is got to do yourself, really. You know, it's, uh, it's like giving up smoking or, um, um, or slimming. <laughs> if you think of a building site, a deck of a fishing vessel isn't much different. You've got working machinery, you've got crane swinging equipment, but the one difference you've got between a building site and a fishing vessel is the floor of the building site's moving. And it's heaving up and down two or three metres, it's rolling, and somebody's spraying a jet of water over you all the time. So it's a highly dangerous environment, and fishermen to work safely need to stay on board we need to work safely with the equipment and we need to work safely together. I sort of somersaulted under the water and I came up and the marker boy that, that had knocked me overboard was only about three or four metres, five metres away. So I swam to it and I grabbed hold of that and I thought, OK, because to have swum ashore would have been a couple of couple hundred metres, you know. And um, so I didn't want to put that to the test and, you know, I could, after, you know, after I'd been there a while, sort of wondering what to do, I could see uh, the other boat from Malineer come in towards me. So I thought, well, okay, you know, wait and, wait and be rescued. So yeah, I've been probably wearing a life jacket now for the last five years. Bottom line is it's going to probably save your life. I mean, there's no guarantee, but it, it will probably save your life and they owe it to the family. 
because the, the, the family, God forbid, the worst comes to the worst, deserve a, a, a funeral, and they deserve not to be put into this kind of strange half-life where they lose out emotionally because it's not closure, and they lose out practically because it's not all the, the insurance and such like just don't pay out. So I think that's why they should wear them. We all think we're in control, and we all think that if you fall over the side, you can just climb back on board. And actually, reality is that's just not the case. And uh, if someone goes overboard, you can lose them very, very quickly, uh, particularly if there's any um, uh, height, wave height at all or any wind conditions at all, you, you will lose them really quickly. People, dis once they've disappeared beneath the water's surface, that's it, they're gone. You're never gonna get them back. I'm David Warwick, I'm a fisherman. <laughs> Um, fish from Mervagissi, although we're currently fishing out of Newland. I've uh, been fishing for 28 years now, so long enough. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. I wouldn't do anything else. You're out there on a beautiful sunny day and it's calm and you look around and you've got the whole sea to look at. And, and then I come home at night and I see people in traffic jams and sat in offices and I just think, nah, it's not for me. Uh, we do now, now we've got these very compact type, we, we do wear them all the time now. I have to admit we never used to, but we do now. I do find that my modern type of life jacket very comfortable to wear, you, you don't notice you're wearing them. I've got a little three-year-old son and I suppose I started to think of things a bit differently and just, just you do it now without thinking about it, but I suppose having a son as much as anything, it just makes you think about life a bit differently, that's all. My name's Frankie Horn. I work for the RMLI as a fishing safety manager, and my job is to promote safety within the fishing industry. We're in Brixham today, handing out life jackets here to fishermen that are funded by Seafish and part of the Fishing Industry Safety Group initiative to provide every fisherman in the UK with a personal flotation device. Well, the fisherman said we want it lighter, we want it a nice oilskin cover, a tough cover on the bottom so it doesn't wear away at the bottom here. Put a Kevlar type material on there. They wanted the manual activator out of the way so it didn't catch in the pots or the nets. They didn't know what date or how long they had the jacket. They didn't know whether the jacket was fit for purpose because they couldn't see inside it, so the company put a, a glass window, so like a plastic window in there. Nice soft collar on there for your roughy toughy guys. But in there, that's really small. Once you put that jacket on, you can handle pots, ropes, anything with this really. When you're ready, hard as you can. And it's throwing his airway up clear, and it's keeping his airway clear even if he falls asleep. Or if he becomes unconscious, that's the secret. Here's your PFD, safe fishing. Um, safe um, safe 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 if you enter the water without a life jacket, the chances are the clothing you're wearing will be buoyant for a few minutes and you'll feel quite buoyant. Then what happens is it loses all the air that's trapped in it and it actually becomes a problem to you. You actually have to swim twice as hard as you normally would have to swim just to stay afloat. Then you're, you're using up all your energy. First thing we tell a fisherman if you go into the water and see survival is you stay still. You lock yourself down and you tighten up your clothing. To stay afloat without a life jacket, you have to swim. Therefore, you're letting in the cold water and your survival time decreases rapidly. So everything you need to do, it's almost impossible to do without the life jacket. There's two sides to the coin. One is to save their life. That's the first thing we want to find out. The other is we have a responsibility to people coming to rescue us that we're afloat and we're alive when they get there. Because they're coming out as volunteers no matter what part of the rescue service they're from, from Coast Guard, RNLI, or helicopters, they're coming out there to help us, and we need to be alive when they're there so they can get home and out of danger themselves. The other side of the coin is we have to think about the families back home. If you're lost at sea and you're not recovered, it can be up to seven years, to seven years before your family can start closing down bank accounts, credit cards, even get the insurance paid out on the body. They can't even get to find anywhere to grieve. It's a hell of a process, it's terrible, and then um, I've seen it happen, and I know people who are dealing with it from the fisherman's mission side, and it's a hard process for anybody to go through, and it just leaves a family in turmoil. So even if we don't get you back alive, we're gonna get you back. And that's a massive bonus. I know, I know it sounds, it's not the end product that we're looking for, but we'll get you back. Well, my name's Nigel Lay. Um, 
I'm a fisherman from Cadworth Cove. I've been fishing ever since I've been 15 with my father and now getting on a bit. Um, but yeah, I've been fishing man and boy all my life. I still think I'm lucky I'm doing this and not sitting in an office somewhere earning a fortune. So I'd rather be doing this and earning a lot less to be quite honest. It's, we are actually only here once and that's that's it. Perhaps with the life jacket I'll uh, even last longer doing it. With the life jacket on you haven't actually got to do anything. Instantly the um, life jacket will inflate as, it, as you hit the water. It's got reflective tape. It will have a whistle on it. It will have a light on it and it will support you. You haven't got to swim. You're going to save all your energy. You've just got to curl up. If you've got, not got any of that equipment on, then you're very surely going to end up in a sorry state, really. It's, it's as simple as that. I don't think changing the law will help at this point in time. I think it's education. Products match with education. And then let's leave it a few years and let's see where we go. And if the fishermen are doing it themselves, we don't need legislation. Fishermen aren't a group of people that you can force to do things very easily. I, I think there are other ways of persuading fishermen to be more safety conscious than, than a law. I don't think a law would work at all. I think in the first instance our view is we should try and voluntarily encourage the uptake of it. So uh, raise awareness, have these roadshows, hand them out for free, um, ensure there's no cost to fishermen that might put them off. I'm not sure that introducing the legislation would necessarily gain much because you would then have a big issue around enforcement. Um, we don't rule it out, but in the first instance we really, really want to try and get that culture change first. Maritime law is a very strange thing and you see it as a lifeboatman. You see uh, just where I live in Dartmouth on the River Dart, you see families going out in dinghies with no life jackets on. They're not breaking the law, they're just being foolish. And I think uh, there's so many rules and regulations that surround fishing, some of them nonsensical, and yet we don't have the one rule that would really save individual fishermen's lives. So I'd be all for it. I think the fishing community would struggle with it as a law. Um, how you monitored when you're out at sea, and particularly when you're an under 10 meter vessel and there's no cameras and things on board, how would you monitor it? How would you police it? That would be the, the big argument. But it'd certainly be a step in the right direction. And unequivocally, that is a law that would save lives, unequivocally. I can't see how that would work at all, you know. Uh, it's like um, I could put my life jacket on here in the harbour. As soon as I get outside, I'm by myself. I could take it off again, you know. It's uh, unless someone's out there. <laughs> in 2010, we pretty confident that we were going to legislate, but the government said no. Give the industry a chance to put its house in order, and then we will consider legislation. One interesting spin-off from the government's approach has been that actually you can't get European funding for mandatory safety equipment. So if we had in 2010 pressed the button and bought in a law, we wouldn't have been able to pay for the approximately 12,000 personal flotation devices we're hoping to get. I think legislation may and I think probably will have a part to play, but I'm excited by the fact that we have got an excellent product with this um, personal flotation device. We're doing the education now, we're getting fishermen used to wearing one and we're, we're, we're starting such that if we press the button and made them mandatory it wouldn't be a shock. You don't only owe it to yourself and the communities that are affected, but you owe it to your family. Um, my husband was very safety conscious and he still had an accident and it was left to me and my children to pick up the pieces. But at the end of the day, anything that prevents other families from feeling that way, then they must do it. It's not worth not coming home to your kids and your loved ones because of a macho thing about not wearing a life. It's just not worth it. Yeah, it's just that security. 
you've got that round your neck and you know if anything happens you're probably going to be alright. Into harbour we sailed on the incoming tide Our fishing nets full of sardine One town to the starboard and one to the port And a river run between On the quayside she stood with her basket in hand Such beauty I've never since seen she on the west bank and me on the east And the river ran between And as we haul away, I'm still in yesterday Everything changed with the turn of the tide I paid the ferryman, anchors away again My love for her I did never confide Cause the river ran between The bridge builders came with the carrot and stone Resistance they hadn't foreseen One town has the money, the other the sun And a river runs between And as we haul away, I'm still in yesterday Everything changed with the turn of the tide I paid the ferryman, anchors away again my love for her I did never confide And as we haul away I'm still in yesterday Everything's changed with the turn of the tide She's way above me, my cry She will never be A bridge doesn't change things The gap is too wide And the river So now there's a path from the east to the west And a pretty young maid of eighteen But a lifetime of conflict the two towns divide And a river runs between And a river runs between Thank you for watching this week's Cornwall Channel. We would love to hear from you, your thoughts and ideas for future Cornish programmes. This dedicated weekly channel for Cornwall on Sky and Freesat aims to deliver information and local programmes. If you have any news you think we should cover, then please get in touch using our website at cornwallchannel.co.uk or via our Facebook and Twitter pages. See you next week. This Cornwall Channel broadcast has been in part funded by FAC Properties, a trusted company for buying, selling and letting property in Cornwall.